Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw, but there's a show coming out on Disney Plus this May 4th. And it's not going to be Tales of Jedi as we expected. Instead, it's going to be called Tales of the Empire. A surprise for sure, but a welcome surprise at that. Whereas Tales of the Jedi followed mainly Count Dooku and Ahsoka Tano throughout their own journey before and during the Clone Wars, Tales of the Empire seems like it's going to be much more focused on two specific factions of the Empire, the Inquisitorious, who hunt down rogue Jedi, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. We start off hearing the sultry voice of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Do you seek Imperial favor? He's standing next to a woman who looked at first like Fennec Shan, but contextually can only be the late Morgan Elspeth, who recently was introduced in The Mandalorian in a Soka TV series. She's basically a fanatic follower of Thrawn and willing to do anything, including sacrificing even her own life to help him obtain his goals. You guys remember, Ahsoka first tracks Morgan Elsbeth down to the forest planet of Corvus in the Mandalorian, where Morgan Elsbeth is hiding after the Empire's collapse and basically collecting resources for some large-scale industrial project. Corvus in the Mandalorian is a mess, and of course it looks very different from this scene in the Tales of the Empire, and that's because Morgan Elsbeth was a logistics and heavy industry expert. She basically strip-mined the planet for resources and burn down many of its forests. What we're seeing here is the before of what Corvus looked like, and it's kinda nice. And now Morgan Elsbeth is about to pledge her loyalty for the first time, the throne. It is that strength I offer the Empire. Offer accepted. The next scene shows a new flashback, a new angle of the devastating attack on Dothomir during the Clone Wars by the Separatists. After Asajj Ventress tried to assassinate Count Dooku with the help of Mother Talzin and the Death Mary Knight Sisters, General Grievous and the Separate Destroyed Army were sent to retaliate, and they end up massacring these witches. Morgan Elsbeth was one of the few survivors that made it out of this incident, and it seems like ever since that day she's been motivated to get revenge for her sisters. And if that means doing whatever Thrawn wants her to do, well, so be it. The next scene shows the Forest of Corvus being burnt down by a flamethrower-wielding trooper who seems to have Imperial rank badges on their uniform. These guys look a lot like the mercenaries that Morgan Elsbeth employs uh, in the Ahsoka series, so I'm guessing these are her men once again. Uh, a younger Morgan Elsbeth and two other witches looking over the destruction of, I'm guessing, their village on Dothomir. Could these two older witches we see standing there be the same ones that were stranded on Peridia? It is very clear that Morgan Elsbeth seems to have a lot of respect for the elderly witches in her society. Next up, we have a shot of a transport arriving on a watery world or moon. I thought initially this was Nur, the moon of Mustafar, where the Inquisitorius have their main underwater base located, who you might recognize from the Kenobi series. She's flanked by clone shock troopers, clones personally trained by Palpatine who are extremely loyal to him. They're used to guard Coruscant and also guard the Republic from rogue Jedi like Ahsoka Tano when she was suspected of the bombing of the Jedi Temple. Of course, it was actually Barriss Ophi who had framed her. She had grown disillusioned with the Jedi and their participation in the conflict. It has always been theorized that she was one of the helmeted Inquisitorious hunting down the Jedi after the war, and now it seems like we're finally going to see that story play out. It should be mentioned that Barris Ophi's appearance here reminds me a lot of Master uh, Luminaria and Dooley's appearance in Rebels. We're not exactly sure who the fourth sister is just yet, but she does address Barris by her first name, which seems to indicate that maybe they knew each other when they were both in the Jedi Order. By the way, the Force Sister is not Amir Allen, like Barriss Ophi, in case you're wondering. She just has similar facial markings and colored skin. Uh, Amir Allens typically like to stick close to one another, and they usually train each other. The next shot is quite interesting as well. Barriss Ophi is now dressed in a plain black tunic, and she's flanked this time by a bunch of clones in stealthy black armor. I wonder if uh, these guys are an early iteration of the Purge Troopers who would specialize in anti-Jedi warfare and were usually deployed with the Inquisitors. Now during this scene, one of the clones talks to Barriss Ophi and says this. Just be glad you're not a Jedi anymore. It makes you wonder if Barriss will be serving with any clones who might remember her from back in the day during the Clone Wars. The next scene has Morgan Elsbeth wielding a pair of awesome looking sickle weapons, the which is quite a talented combatant, and it looks like this is some sort of trial, or maybe practice. Perhaps she's being mentored by those witches that were with her. I believe she is trying to prepare for the Battle of Dothomir in this scene. We then see Morgan Elsbeth fighting droids in that same battle. We then get this transition where she's standing in front of the fire during the Clone Wars on Dothomir, 
And another shot of an older Elzu standing in front of another forest on fire, I'm guessing that is Corvus. Once again, it's clear that Elsbeth's hatred, desire for revenge, are being brought to life in the physical form in these massive infernos. One fire destroyed her life on Dathomir, and now she's going to bring that same fire to Corvus and do the same thing to other people. Next up, they finally nailed the shape of the Grand Inquisitor's head. It's not as thin and weird as Rebels, yet not as dumpy and round as the one we see in Kenobi. This is peak Grand Inquisitor head shape. End of story. In the scene, he immediately starts training the young Barris Ophi on how to use the dark side with their usual dark side one liner. Mercy only breeds defeat. I'm a firm believer that Barris Ophi will reject the Inquisitorius and that she will be one of... I guess the early failures in this program, but I'll save that line of thought for another video, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I will say this, notice how Barris Ophi is not really wearing true Inquisitorious armor in any of these scenes. Neither do we see her pass the final trial to become an Inquisitor. The next shot, we have the Republic military base on Coruscant. You might remember it from the famous episode where Ahsoka escapes from prison after being framed during the Jedi Temple bombing with Barris Ophi. The shot following that takes place on Corvus once again inside the city where Ahsoka and Morgan had that famous duel. It seems like this is the place where you have showdowns for ownership of this city. This time it looks like Morgan and her men are trying to take over the city from the same elderly Asian man who is the mayor of the town in The Mandalorian. Except this time, instead of being protected by the Mandalorian, he has a bunch of brightly dressed individuals who kind of look like rebel troopers, but actually I think these guys are just judicial forces. We always here mentioned but never really see. They're basically the only federally backed security presence the Republic has in the galaxy, other than the Jedi, ever since the uh, Rusan Reformation. And their little party gets bullied by Morgan Elsbeth as she takes over Corvus. Next, we have a flashback to the Clone Wars, and Morgan Elsbeth is fighting General Grievous. This is absolutely terrifying, and I would love to see how she survived this ordeal. I also wonder if we're going to see a science Ventress in the flashbacks, because she's there as well. Anyway, the next scene shows Morgan Elsbeth, I'm guessing, escaping from that fight with the two witches in tow, followed by a bunch of droids landing on the ground. I'm guessing they're trying to cut her off, and judging by the colors of the armor, these aren't B1s, but the feared B2 battle droids. I'm guessing this will be a very important scene in the show. This is probably where Morgan Elsbeth thinks her journey is going to be over. Then we have a shot of the four sisters staring at a wall. This is kind of a long shot, but it kind of reminds me of that scene of the safe house uh, hideout in Kenobi where Quinlan Voss's writings can be seen on the wall. Next up, we have the fourth sister fighting against the Jedi. I'm guessing the Jedi is someone random, although there is a slight possibility it might be Siri Junda, who was protecting several young Padawan before getting chased down and caught by the Inquisitorius. She'd fall to the dark side for a little bit. She was heavily featured in the Jedi Fallen Order video games and was a mentor for Cal Kestis. It also looks like someone in a flight suit is running up to that duel. Could it be Barriss Ophi, maybe? Don't know. The next shot is interesting. It's tied to the previous shot with the B2 battle droids landing. But it seems like someone arrives and saves the day and destroys those droids with a bright blast of energy. I'm guessing it has to be a force user of some kind. I'm completely stumped by this. I have no idea who did this or why. But maybe this is the person who saved Morgan Elsbeth from a certain death, and somehow that makes her indebted to Thrawn? Then we see the final trial to become an Inquisitor. Barris Ophi must fight another recruit to the death. Pretty interesting concept here, but not surprised at all. Wait until Darth Vader starts attending these training sessions. Uh, it's going to get a lot more brutal. People are going to be losing their limbs. And that's exactly who appears next, Darth Vader. Take a look at this row of Inquisitors. By the way, we have the fourth sister and Barris Ophi, but behind them is surprise Merrick from the Ahsoka series. Everyone really wanted to know uh, who was behind that mask. Maybe we'll find out now. Who knows? And also, we have the Inquisitor that Ahsoka defeats in Tales of the Jedi. This is basically the early Inquisitorius. The other members of the team we see during the Rebel series and the Kenobi series, well, they probably don't join until much later on. I'm going to guess that Merrick might be assigned to work with Morgan Elspeth somehow, which is why they're both in this show, and this is also why Merrick is still with Elspeth in the Ahsoka series. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I was surprised by this, pleasantly. I really love Tales of the Jedi. I know it's not meant to be anything more than just a collection of stories, but just because they're small doesn't mean they can't be good. I mean, um, some of these stories are amongst my favorite stories in all of Star Wars, especially the Qui-Gon Jinn and Dooku tale. I really love that a lot. The fact that now we'll be taking a look at the Empire's point of view during this time period, well, as a lore nerd, that has me very excited. Anyway guys, stay tuned and subscribe for all of the Star Wars discussion you never knew you needed to hear. 
I'll see you guys next time.